Good morning. Today is Thursday, May 14th. Uh, I'm Pastor Terry from Tuscola United Methodist Church, and welcome to our daily devotional. Um, we have been taking some time the past few weeks to walk through Charles Stanley's Finding Peace devotional, and a really powerful one, I believe. And today we're going to talk about overcoming fear. Um, again, recognizing that many of us are living in fear right now. And so our scripture reading today is kind of a long one, but um, I hope you'll follow along with me as, as I read it, um, because it's a very powerful scripture. It comes from 1 Samuel chapter 19, and this is the story about how uh, Saul and reacted to finding out that David was going to be, um, had been anointed to be king. So hear then the word of the scripture. Saul, excuse me, Saul spoke with his son Jonathan and with all his servants about killing David. But Saul's son Jonathan took great delight in David. Jonathan told David, my father Saul is trying to kill you. Therefore, be on guard tomorrow morning. Stay in a secret place and hide yourself. I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where you are, and I will speak to my father about you. If I learn anything, I will tell you. Jonathan spoke well of David to his father Saul, saying to him, The king should not sin against his servant David, because he has not sinned against you, and because his deeds have been of good service to you. For he took his life in his hand when he attacked the Philistine, and the Lord brought about a great victory for all Israel. You saw it and rejoiced. Why then will you sin against an innocent person by killing David without cause? Saul heeded the voice of Jonathan. Saul swore, and as the Lord lives, he shall not be put to death. So Jonathan called David and related all these things to him. Jonathan then brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as before. Again, there was a war, and David went out to fight the Philistines. He launched a heavy attack on them so that they fled before him. Then an evil spirit from the Lord came upon Saul, and as he sat in his house with his spear in his hand while David was playing music, Saul sought to pin David to the wall with the spear, but he eluded Saul so that he struck the spear into the wall. David fled and escaped that night. Saul sent messengers to David's house to keep watch over him, planning to kill him in the morning. David's wife, Michael, told him, if you do not save your life tonight, tomorrow you will be killed. So Michael let David down through the window. He fled away and escaped. Michael took an idol and laid it on the bed. She put a net of goat's hair on its head and covered it with the claws. When Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, he is sick. Then Saul sent the messengers to see David for themselves. He said, bring him up to me in the bed that I may kill him. When the messengers came in, the idol was in the bed with the covering of goat's hair on its head. Saul said to Michael, Why have you deceived me like this and let my enemy go so that he has escaped? Michael answered Saul, He said to me, Let me go. Why should I kill you? Now David fled and escaped. He came to Samuel at Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. He and Samuel went and settled at Naoth. Saul was told, David is at Naoth in Ramah. Then Saul sent messengers to take David. When they saw the company of the prophets in a frenzy, with Samuel standing in charge of them, the Spirit of God came upon the messengers of Saul, and they also fell into a prophetic frenzy. When Saul was told, he sent other messengers, and they fell into a frenzy. Saul sent messengers again a third time, and they also fell into a frenzy. Then he himself went to Ramah. He came to the great well that is in Seku and asked, Where are Samuel and David? And someone said, They are at Naoth in Ramah. He went there toward Naoth in Ramah, and the Spirit of God came upon him. As he was going, he fell into a prophetic frenzy until he came to Naoth in Ramah. He too stripped off his clothes, and he too fell into a frenzy before Samuel. He lay naked all that day and night. Therefore it is said, is Saul also among the prophets? 
May God. Many people think that the opposite of fear is courage, or maybe hope, or strength. But the true opposite of fear is actually faith. Fear causes paralysis and fear can quench one's peace. Not only does it quench it, but it attacks the foundation of peace. And the foundation of peace is faith. When we are afraid, peace goes out the window. Much of our fear is rooted in the doubt that God will be present and that God will provide justice or help or be capable of dealing with the crisis at hand. Faith tells us, yes, God is here. Yes, God will provide. Yes, God is capable of all things. Fear is rooted in threats, sometimes threatening words, sometimes threatening behavior, and sometimes threatening situations. Faith says, I will not be traumatized by threats. I will act wisely. I will not act fearfully. I believe God will prevent whatever threat is from ever coming to pass. And if the threat does come to pass, I believe that God will help me deal with whatever is thrown at me. When Saul, the king of Israel, realized that God had taken his hand of anointing and blessing from him because of his own arrogance and disobedience and had placed it instead upon the young man, David, who had been like a son to him, he was furious. He began a campaign to find David and to kill him, to remove this threat from his life. On the other hand, David felt fully threatened by Saul's army and on several occasions feared for his life. But scripture tells us that David was strengthened by God's promises to protect him and one day make him the king of Israel. In our modern world, we often read stories of people who, in spite of intimidation by disease, accident, danger, whatever the case may be, pressed ahead to certain outcomes. Maybe their outcomes were rejection, defeat, or sometimes they were victory. Arctic explorers, Olympic athletes, missionaries, venture capitalists, philanthropists, all those types of people come to mind. So understand that threats do not have to cripple us. Our challenge in time of threat is not to focus on what might become a reality, but rather to focus on what we can really count on to be true. Many people are living under a dark cloud of threat right now. Some are experiencing the threat of the disease of coronavirus. Some are fearing the threat of the loss of work and the loss of, of personal relationships as they struggle in isolation alone. The answer to these types of threats is faith in what we know to be true about God, in what we know to be true about God's love and ability to care for us and to provide us with all that we need. What we need right now is God's peace, which can help us carry through with anything. May God's peace be with you today instead of fear. God bless you, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.